I've talked about the basic concepts of Wolfram physics, nodes, edges, graphs and rules. I just threw these concepts out there. No explanation, no rhyme, no reason. Nodes, edges, graphs and rules. Take them or leave them. Naturally, this raised a few questions in some people's minds. These questions can be summed up as follows. Wait, what? Nodes, edges, graphs and rules? Why? This is a deep question, so let's get into it. At the end of episode 4, Different Rules, Different Universes, I asked the question, what does our universe look like? If we're going to satisfy ourselves that the nodes, edges, graphs and rules of Wolfram physics are a true representation of our universe, we need to be clear on what our universe looks like. When we look at the universe, what do we see? Well, here are a few things. We see space. We see time. We see matter. Think of that stone I held in my hand last time. It's made of something, matter. When I dropped it, it fell through space. A short time after I dropped it, I caught it in my other hand. Space. Time. Matter. We could go into a lot more detail on each of these, but just recognising that these are the things we observe in our universe is a start. If our nodes, edges, graphs and rules don't look like space, time and matter as we observe them in our universe, then they're not going to work as a theory of physics. Space, time and matter aren't the only things we see in our universe. We also see life, we see consciousness, we see meaning. These things are more important to us than space, time and matter. Who cares about falling stones? What we really care about are the higher things. Life, consciousness, meaning. Here's the bad news. These things may be beyond the scope of any theory of physics, let alone theories as fundamental as Stephen Wolfram's. But here's the good news. I'm not going to cop out entirely on the questions of life, consciousness and meaning. They're too fascinating for me to retreat into narrow reductionism. I'll return to them in future episodes. In this episode, however, I'm going to focus on the first of these three fundamental things that we see in our universe. Space. What is space? What does it look like? We're taught in school that space is three-dimensional. Imagine for a moment, though, that you hadn't been taught in school that space is three-dimensional. How would you think about space? Here's how the Polynesians, who navigated their way by canoe between hundreds of Pacific islands, once represented their world. These days, our maps are so precise, with every location plotted in exact longitude and latitude, that we forget how the world once appeared to us. The Polynesians represented Pacific Islands as points, and the ocean currents between those islands as lines between those points. You might notice a passing resemblance between those stick charts and the nodes and edges of Wolfram physics we've been exploring in the last few episodes. The nodes look a little like the shells representing islands on the stick charts, and the edges look a little like the sticks representing the roots between them. Let me be clear. The graphs of Wolfram physics are on an entirely different scale from these stick charts. The routes between the islands on the charts represent distances of maybe 100 miles, around 10 to the power of 5 metres. The edges between the nodes on our graphs represent distances of, who knows, maybe 10 to the minus 100 metres. 10 to the power of 5 metres versus 10 to the power of minus 100 metres? That's an unimaginable difference in scale. Still, it's promising that some of the graphs of Wolfram physics show some of the same characteristics of space that we see in those beautiful stick charts. Let's dig a little deeper into what those characteristics of space are. Characteristic number one is position. In our universe, things have positions in space. Take any one of the shells on the stick chart. It's not just anywhere, it's somewhere. 
it's right here at this position in space rather than any other position in space. Same goes for the island it represents. That island isn't just anywhere in the Pacific, it's somewhere in the Pacific. And that's true of the nodes on our graphs too. Take any one of these nodes. It's not just anywhere on the graph, it's somewhere on the graph. So far, so good. Characteristic number two is distance. In our universe, some things are further apart than others. Take two shells that are close together on the stick chart. They're separated only by a short length of stick on the chart. The islands they represent are a relatively short canoe ride apart in the Pacific. However, take the shell on the far left of the chart and the one on the far right of the chart. These two shells are a long way apart. To get from one to the other on the chart, you have to traverse many different sticks. To paddle between the islands they represent in the Pacific, you have to ride many different currents, no doubt stopping at some of the islands along the way. And again, that's true of the nodes on our graphs too. Take two nodes that are connected by a single edge. When I wrote the software to render the graph, I designed it to show these two nodes close together because you only have to traverse that one edge to get from one to the other. However, take the node on the far left of the graph and the one on the far right of the graph. To get from the far left node to the far right node on the graph, you have to traverse many different edges. So I designed the software to show those two nodes far apart. Note that it's not the lengths of the edges that matter here. Those lengths are arbitrary. I designed the software to make all the edges as close as possible to the same length. What matters is the number of edges you have to traverse to get from one to the other. That concept of the number of edges between two nodes on the graph looks like a pretty good representation of our concept of the distance between two points in space. So again, so far, so good. Position and distance aren't the only characteristics of space we'll want to reproduce in Wolfram physics. And space isn't the only thing we see in the universe that we'll also want to see in our nodes, edges, graphs, and rules. There's time too, remember, and matter, not to mention myriad other aspects of the universe. Still, position and distance are a start. We can look at some of the graphs of Wolfram physics and immediately recognize at least these two fundamental characteristics of space in what we see. Some of our graphs, at least, look a little like space as we know it. Space as the Polynesians once represented it in their stick charts. So, why nodes, edges, graphs and rules? Because they look a little like our universe. Of course, the nodes, edges, graphs and rules of Wolfram physics are going to have to look a lot like our universe if it's to be a viable theory of physics. We'll get there. Next time I'll go beyond position and distance and introduce a few other characteristics a space will want to reproduce in Wolfram physics. The more of these characteristics we introduce, the better we'll be able to distinguish between rules that yield unfamiliar universes and rules that yield universes that look a little like our own. Thanks for listening to The Last Theory. Join me for fresh insights into Wolfram physics every other week. Subscribe to the free newsletter, podcast or YouTube channel at lasttheory.com. After all, this might be the most fundamental scientific breakthrough of our time.